Welcome back to Module 2, Scrum Principles. In this session, we'll see how decisions are made in Scrum and what the three main characteristics of empirical process control are. In Scrum, decisions are based on observation and experimentation rather than on detailed upfront planning. Empirical process control relies on three main ideas of transparency, inspection, and adaptation. We'll now discuss the three main ideas of empirical process control with the help of a few diagrams. Let's start with the first idea, transparency. Transparency allows all facets of any scrum process to be observed by anyone. This promotes an easy and transparent flow of information throughout the organization and creates an open work culture. In Scrum, transparency is provided by openly sharing the project vision statement, which can be viewed by all stakeholders and the Scrum team. The prioritized product backlog with user stories that can be viewed by everyone, both inside and outside the team. The release planning schedule, which may be coordinated across multiple Scrum teams. Information radiators, such as the scrum board and burndown charts, which make a team's progress clearly visible to all. And by daily stand-up meetings conducted during the conduct daily stand-up process, in which all team members report what they've done the previous day, what they plan to do today, and any problems preventing them from completing their tasks in the current sprint. The next characteristic of empirical process control is inspection. Let's have a look at the display diagram which summarizes the concept of inspection in Scrum. Scrum provides a point of inspection with the use of a common Scrum board and other information radiators which show the progress of the Scrum team on completing the tasks in the current sprint. The collection of feedback from the customer and other stakeholders during the develop epics create prioritized product backlog, and conduct release planning processes give additional opportunities for inspection. The final point of inspection comes during the review meeting when the team seeks approval of the deliverables by the product owner and the customer in the demonstrate and validate sprint process. The third main characteristic of empirical process control is adaptation. Let's take a look at the display diagram that summarizes the concept of adaptation in Scrum. Adaptation happens as the Scrum core team and stakeholders learn through transparency and inspection and then adapt by making improvements in the work they're doing. Some examples of adaptation include the following. In daily stand-up meetings, Scrum team members openly discuss impediments to completing their tasks. After the meeting, the Scrum Master coordinates help from other team members. More experienced members in the Scrum team also mentor those with relatively less experience and knowledge of the project or technology. When the needed resource doesn't reside within the team, the Scrum Master will acquire it externally. Risk identification is performed and iterated throughout the project. Identified risks become inputs to several Scrum processes, including create prioritized product backlog, groom prioritized product backlog, and create sprint backlog. Improvements can also result in change requests, which are discussed and approved during the develop epics, create prioritized product backlog, and groom prioritized product backlog processes. The Scrum guidance body interacts with Scrum team members during the create user stories, estimate tasks, create deliverables, and groom prioritized product backlog processes to offer guidance and also provide expertise as required for the team to adapt to necessary changes and challenges. In the retrospect sprint process, agreed actionable improvements are determined based on the outputs from the demonstrate and validate sprint process. These adaptions are integrated into later sprints and projects. And in the retrospect project meeting, participants document lessons learned and perform reviews looking for opportunities to improve processes and address inefficiencies. Embedded within these processes, practices, and activities of Scrum are numerous opportunities for adapting to changing requirements and business realities. Here's an example of such a challenge faced in waterfall project management style how the customer explained it, how the project leaders understood it, how the engineers designed it, how construction built it, 
how the business consultant described it, how the project was documented, what was operational, how the customer was billed, how it was supported, and what the customer really needed. Since it's a sequential approach, incorrect inputs at initial stages translates to unsatisfactory outputs towards the final delivery. With other methods, such as the traditional waterfall model, considerable planning needs to be done in advance of actual production. And the customer generally doesn't review product components until near the end of a phase or the end of the entire project. This method often presents huge risks to the project success because the effect of each risk may be amplified through its impact on several developmental processes and thereby may have more potential for significantly impacting project delivery and customer acceptance. The customer's interpretation and understanding of the finished product may be very different from what was actually understood and produced by the team. And this may not be known until very late in the project's development. The displayed figure demonstrates an example of these challenges. Thank you for learning with us.